Welcome to Let's Learn DirectX 11.1 Part 3. My name is Anna Loveland and today we're going to cover tearing and swap chains. So in this session we're going to learn a little bit about tearing, we're going to learn a little about swap chains, and we're going to dive into code and start the creation of our swap chain. And the first steps that we'll do for that is creating our direct 3D device. So what tearing is, is if we draw a sprite to the screen and then we move it in code and have it redraw to the screen, but the redraw isn't complete on the back buffer before it shows on the screen, we could get what looks like this image where we have torn the image. And this means we've partially redrawn the image in its new position instead of where we want it at the end result, which would have the whole image there. So to combat this, we use swap chains. So what a swap chain is, is it's something that manages one or more buffers and it will allow the the context to draw to the screen using a specific buffer. But it's not quite as simple as having a single buffer. So what it has is it has multiple buffers and it'll draw to a specific buffer uh, that we call the back buffer and it'll swap the back buffer with the next buffer each time we want to uh, switch, uh, switch views. So what uh, would actually happen is we'll draw to buffer one and buffer two will be drawn to screen. Then when we switch it, buffer one will be drawn to screen and then the nth buffer will be the one that we draw to. And then when we switch each time, the one that's drawn will become the one that we were drawing to. And the one that we were drawing to gets moved to the next one in the queue. So the swap chain actually abstracts all of these things for us. We don't really access things directly. We are given uh, a simple structure that has a bunch of buffers that are hidden from us and one of the buffers will be drawn to the screen for example buffer one and buffer two will be the back buffer that we get given to draw to and we will have a pointer to this back buffer and our context will then use this back buffer so we're going to need a few structures in this we're going to need an id 3d 11 device one this is a virtual representation of our d3d device and we'll need a device context one, which is used for rendering or drawing to the screen or the buffer. And we will need a IDXGI swap chain one, swap chain structure. So let's dive into code. So I'm following on exactly from where we left off before. So if I open main.c++ here, let me zoom in. You'll see that it is pretty much exactly the code that we built in the last video. Instead, we are going to make a new class. So we're going to make a class called Direct3D Application. So I've just got a, a header and an empty C++ file for now. That shouldn't have opened. That is not what I'm trying to click on. Okay. Sorry for that. And the C++ file is empty. We'll start implementing things in a moment but we need to add in structures into this header. So this header is very simple. Pragma once we include our pre-compiled headers, we want WRL and the Microsoft WRL namespace that we can get a COM pointer. And what a COM pointer is, is it's basically uh, similar to the smart pointer that we mentioned last time. Now, we also include D3D11 underscore one dot H. We use our namespaces for the UI core and for the application model core. Then, we start our class, we're going to have an internal uh, constructor, we're going to have an initialize function that takes in a call window, and a create device and swap chain function. So let's just quickly add in some of these uh, members that we're going to need. So we're going to want com pointer, and we want this com pointer to i dxgi swap chain one. And we want this to be called DXGI swap chain. And we want a com pointer to ID 3D 11 device one. And we're going to call this D 3D device. And we want a com pointer to ID 3D 11 device context one going to call this d3d device context very simple very easy 
and for a later stage in all of us uh, all of these video series we're going to add in two more things here we also want an i d 3 d 11 render target view and we're going to call this render target for now we can rename it later and we also want a id 3d 11 depth stencil view so a depth stencil view all right there we go and we're going to call this depth stencil view Okay, so I'm not going to explain too much about the render target or the depth sensor view for this point. We're going to rather start the implementation of this class. So in here we're going to go pragma once. Just make sure we have our pre-compiled headers. And then we're going to include our direct 3D application.h. So first things first, we want to do our constructor. Um, let me zoom in. Sorry about that. So direct 3D application and we want the constructor. And that takes no parameters. So the constructor is going to do two things for us at this point. The first of which is we're going to call initialize. So initialize and this takes a call window. So we're going to use core window get for current thread. Okay, very simple, very easy to use. And then we're going to call create device and swap chain. And while we're at this, we're going to just go void direct 3D application. And we want the initialize core window. window. And we just want to set our core window in our class to window. Okay, now we're going to do our create device and swap chain. So void direct 3D application create device and swap chain. And we are ready to start implementing this. So for this class, for this function, we're going to need to use a function called d3d11 create device. So this is a very easy to use function. What we're first going to do, however, is we're going to make two com pointers, and I'll explain why in a moment. So we're going to make a com pointer to id3d11 device. Call it temporary device, and we're going to make a com pointer to id3d11 device context and we're going to call it temp context. So the, D th the, the D3D11 create device function is going to give us back a D3D device and a D3D device context and what we need is a device one and a device context one. So first things first, we also lastly need to have a D3D feature level pointer and we're going to call this feature level and we're going to make this a null pointer. Very easy. We can now call d3d11 create device. So let's take a look here. The first thing that it asks for is an adapter. For now, we're not going to worry about this in this series, so we're just going to give it a null pointer and it'll default. The next thing that it wants is a driver type, so we're going to specify here that we want a d3d driver type hardware. So we want hardware acceleration for our direct 3D device and for our software module we're going to say null pointer. The next thing that we need to look at is our device creation flags and in this case we're going to go for D3D11 devi create device BGRA support, so we have blue, green, red, alpha support, and we're going to use a null pointer for feature levels because we're not too worried about what we get at the moment, and for the number of feature levels we're going to use zero because we gave a null pointer. 
SDK version is going to be a constant and this is something that we'll use for everything so it's going to be d3d11 underscore SDK version and then we're going to give a pointer to our temp device and we're going to give a feature give the feature level and then we're going to give a pointer to our temporary context okay and that is the end of the d3d11 create device function so if this runs successfully we will have a device the last thing we need to do is we actually want to store the references in d3d device and d3d device context so we can go temp device as pointer to d3d device and this will convert it to our device one and we can do the same thing for the context as ampersand d3d device context so that's very easy to do and very easy to use so if we save this now we should be able to in our main go into our direct 3d view and what we'll just do here is after this activation we're going to go application is equal to ref new direct 3d application okay and that's going to give us some errors that's not an issue what we need to do is go right at the top here and say include direct3d application.h and we need inside this class to have a protected private protected with a c Protected private direct 3D application application and problem solved. So this will create the device. If we give this a run, there should be no errors. And there we go. So this is the end of the part three. In the next part, what we will do is we will use this direct 3D device and our device context to build our, uh, our DirectX graphics infrastructure swap chain. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you join us next time.